Welcome to the Out There channel, live stream 409. Boy oh boy, I've been trying to start this for the last hour. Uh, there's always new problems to deal with. Let's see how we go. Hiding. I'm searching. Anyone out there? I'm loving. I'm finding love. I'm hiding. I'm searching. I'm loving. I'm finding love. Dog Let me control your body. Written to follow me. I'm searching. I'm loving. I'm finding. So, have you followed me to the basement, people? <laughs> Not the parents' basement, but Area 51 basement. That's the only basement to be. Hello, good to be back. And. Another fun session, hopefully. <laughs> well, what problems can we run into? Lots. <laughs> Technical problems, always. So... Uh, it looks like it's all working all right here. So far. Let me just check the audio. One, two, three. Alien keeping up. Looks like it. <laughs> Mr. Gray is with us. Okay. Uh, last time he was mimicking everybody else that was talking, which was kind of funny, but um, didn't really matter too much. Ah, so we've got a few things to go over. Again, I've been working on a big project and uh, keeping an eye on things in the background. So this is just a weekend catch up. Uh, it's Saturday here at 6 p.m. I hope I wanted to start at 4 p.m. But uh, it is what it is. Uh, <laughs> I moved around some things and some of the sound wasn't working. And uh, uh, yes, uh, always got to check things out after you relocate files. Um, so let's see. Welcome. the AT channel live 409 doubt if anyone want to join me though uh, UFO vid catch up and try and so yeah yeah that one where I did the butterfly the slow motion butterfly motion I, I took about a 50 second clip from BBC Guess what? They refused fair use on it. The same as every ever every time that we use any of theirs, is they never honour fair use. It's like uh, UK need to be educated on fair use, especially BBC and Discovery Channel's the other bad one. Uh, these big media corporations, they're just greedy. Um, I think it's because of the context. I content ID thing um, because if they automatically get they have like a third party person that controls making money from their footage right so uh, these uh, third party things uh, scumbags right so they will try and always not on a fair use so they can make money so they make money and BBC makes money and Google makes money. Everybody makes money apart from you. <laughs> you get screwed over. So 50 second clip uh, for a three hour show. Uh, they could put ads throughout it, right? Or worst is they can limit what countries it shows in for that 50 seconds. So I thought, nah, I'll just cut it out the last episode on YouTube. Uh, it's only YouTube that we need to worry about because they're the ones that are sucking up to these people. Well, they're the ones part of the money-making machine, right? Uh, they don't care about uh, education, 
fair use and all that sort of stuff. That's just all nonsense. They they tend to say they are, but they're not. Um, so it's really frustrating. So what's new? Well, yeah, a few things, I guess. Um, like all these TV networks, uh, is that Travel TV that does that one? Uh, Expedition X have put out a couple of episodes on the new, uh, on, on what the, well, the old Navy footage, right? Uh, Catalina Island. And they meet these two clowns. Uh, what's their names? Uh, and they can't even get the facts right. Uh, so it makes you wonder, uh, can you trust any of these Navy guys? Um, so here is uh, on an episode. Uh, see if I can play the clip. Uh, you know what it's like with um, copyright, but I might have to pause it every five seconds. On them in, in hypersonic velocity, like it owns them. And then it just zorched out of the area like like it was in a Star Trek video. They, they couldn't even come. I'm not even sure if that's loud enough. Um, let me just put it on echo so I can hear. Close to maneuvering the way that these could. So looking at this video, what stands out to you to say this is something that's never been seen before? Number one. Okay, we're bits as important this one. Uh, one that has no control surfaces. That has no wings. No. It's on that one. No wings. No visible no powers. <laughs> no means of control whatsoever. This is a completely smooth tic tac shaped thing. Mm -hmm. There's no way that it should be up in the air. And then it's all one color. Yeah. Yeah. There's no. There's no difference. It's not just one color. It's very cold. It's colder than everything around it. What? The exhaust emitted from a typical jet engine is around 1100 degrees Fahrenheit. That means any engine seen through a thermal camera glows brightly. The Tic Tac shows no signs of heat. In fact, it's the opposite. The atmosphere... Okay, so this straight away. Fake news. <laughs> uh, so these guys are meant to be experts on their own technology, right? The FLIR. Radar systems flew. Well, um, apparently, uh, that black mode is actually TV mode. That's normal vision. It's not actually looking at thermal at all. And that's what they're seeing on the normal external cameras. Uh, if you remember the footage, it was flickering, flickering between white and black. And the white version was actually the thermal. And the black version was normal TV mode which is not using thermal. Um, so I checked it out with Mick West, uh, tried, tried to find his footage, because that's what I understood. When I heard this on the TV show, I thought, what? Uh, have they got their facts right here? Uh, no, they haven't. Um, so I tried to contact uh, Mick West, but uh, yeah, he's not interested. Bollocks of it. But... Um, I have got his YouTube video here where he explains the initial image, right? Mode where white is hot and we can see the rotating gimbal footage. Rotate. But it gets a lot of interest because of the testimony of Commander David Fravor, who describes a bizarre encounter with a 40 foot tic tac shaped craft that ran rings around him before shooting off at hypersonic speeds. This video is not of that incident. It was shot shortly later by a different pilot in the same group. But what does it show? To understand the footage, you've got to know that there's actually two cameras being used, and the video switches between them, as well as switching zoom levels. It starts out in infrared mode, where white is hot, and we can see a shimmering heat source. 18 seconds in, they switch to the TV camera, which is just visible light. We can just see a blurry shape in the distance. Yeah, okay, so that's meant to be a high-quality Navy um, camera pod cams on fighter pilots. 
<laughs> All right, uh, spud cam. And, of course, these Navy guys don't even realise what Mick West has just said there. That there's two cameras and they're flicking, uh, the pilot flicking between the two modes to try and identify it from the heat signature and the uh, normal camera. So, yeah, that changes everything, doesn't it? Um, so, yeah, on the TV show, they might have to do a retraction, eh? Saying it isn't colder than the atmosphere. It was actually hot. Which is what you get from a plane as well. From the engines. That's the whole thing that Mick West has been going on about. Uh, so if you want to go over the footage. You probably can with Mick here. He breaks it down. But he's talking about it being a plane in the distance. Which it could be. Um... And it might not be what uh, David Fravor saw, right? It may be just another fighter jet in the distance, but he reckons it's a jumbo. But anyway, we'll just recap it. We'll just have a quick watch of it. At 41 seconds, it switches back to infrared. And we'll discuss that later. But for now, I'm going to focus on the TV footage, the visible light image. Here we see a dark blob, wider than it is high, and initially a little like a tic-tac or caplet shape. But over... Well, I analysed this on my episode, if you've not seen it, and it actually comes out to a really good tic-tac shape, actually. So that matches um, David Fravor's explanation, but he's saying, uh, Mickwiss is going to tell you that it's so low res that you can't see the tail fins and all that. Which uh, is possible, because we've seen other tic-tac footage of planes land at the airport where you couldn't see the tail fin or the wings, right? But we knew from the flight radar map that there was a plane coming down and what number it was and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so you've got to be careful. You've got to really, before you get sucked in by all these TV shows that only have half the facts, uh, always check it out yourself. For 20 seconds, it gets larger as the jet gets closer and the shape shifts a bit, almost as if it's rotating about the vertical axis. It becomes a little more peanut shaped and a kind of tail seems to appear on the left so what is it it means there's a tail i thought they'd just be distortion myself because <laughs> it's like so, so so crappy you know if you look at the rest of the footage here but who knows um could that be a plain tail you say it's on the left. Um, is it a plane turning? I think it's a distant plane, flying at a bit of an angle to the jet and slightly above it. We know the camera's angled up at around 5 degrees at the start. But how can a plane look like a black blob? Well, we know planes can look very dark when backlit. And we know things tend to look like blobs when they're far away. Especially in low resolution blurry footage. So let's take a plane and see what it looks like, backlit in low resolution blurry footage. Here's a typical passenger jet, a Boeing 767. If it's backlit, it would look more like this. Of course, what we're seeing is out of focus, so a bit more like this. Not only is it out of focus, but it's also low resolution, so let's do that too. Finally, there's a bunch of noise in the video. Let's have a look at that. So now we've got a simulated visible light image of a distant jet at various angles. We can see that from this angle, it looks a bit like the UFO at the start of the TV segment. And from this angle, it looks a bit like it does at the end of the segment, with a more peanut-like shape and the hint of a tail to the left. I don't know, it's more visible tail in his simulated one. So, I don't know. So, if this is all we had to go by, I'd say this fits pretty well. Oh, I don't. <laughs> I'd say it's still open for a debate there, McQuist. I still think it's a tic tac. <laughs> um, it almost looks like it's got a little wing coming down here, if anything, which is similar to the gimbal one. Mm. So, I, I don't know. His vision is different than mine, obviously. If anything, I would have said if he switched it, flipped it, uh, it would probably look more like a plane because that's got more of a tail fin there. So 
So maybe the Nimitz video is just a distant passenger plane. But what about the infrared footage? That's showing the heat from the engines. And we saw in the Chilean Navy UFO case that the glare from the engines can hide the shape of the plane. At the start of the video, the Nimitz infrared glare doesn't have a good shape as the plane is so far away. Later we see more of a horizontal shape, similar to the black shape in the TV footage, but smaller. By the way, this case, the Chilean Navy UFO, is a great example of how experts get things wrong. The pilots thought they were looking at something small and close, but it was just a large passenger plane over 80 miles away. They then spent two years investigating it, and eventually declared it a genuine unidentified, only to have it identified a week later by people on the internet, including me. <laughs> Here's some infrared video of a 767, shot from the front, getting closer to the camera. Like in the Nimitz video, at first it just looks like a dot of light, but as it gets closer we get more of a horizontal shape as the engines separate. So it certainly could be the same thing in the Nimitz video. Unfortunately, they've cranked up the sharpening in this video, giving it a strong aura like in the gimbal video. What are the sudden movements of the UFO? They appear to all just be camera movements. There's a rotation when the camera does a gimbal lock correction around 3 degrees, and the other movements all coincide with changes in zoom. Finally, the camera does a zoom change and just does not lock back onto the object, and it drifts off as it's not being tracked. Final zoom change gives the illusion that it's moving off really fast, but if you correct for zoom, you see that it's actually not. Is it solved? No, not 100%. The fit is pretty good, but not exact. But this was just the first plane I tried. Maybe a different plane or a different camera setting will work better. But I think it shows that a distant plane is a very real possibility that should probably be at the top of the list. And again, this isn't the same thing that Commander Fravor saw. So this just being a plane doesn't mean that he didn't see a giant jittery tic-tac shaped craft. I don't know what he saw, but I know what this video looks like. It looks like a plane. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure if I agree that it's a plane. It's just not enough information there. But uh, certainly a craft of some sort. And you can see he's mapped the outside of that is um, the heat signature from the skin this time when the gimbal one he said it was the heat glare of the engines and you can't actually see the body of the plane so yeah you can see how you can switch it to match your narrative right um so that's um sums up the navy one again i guess uh still open for debate and of course you can't dismiss uh, the pilot's accounts doesn't mean it's alien craft though it still could be DARPA, as we've looked at in the previous life shows that we looked at and some think um no expert in that <laughs> you know but uh uh, it does fit a balloon, it does fit a drone, right? Uh, until we get more information, there's not much we can say about it. Uh, it's, it's not like this um, was HD footage that solved it completely, right? Um, some blurry blob. And the same with the, the latest one. And of course, when you get these two guys here saying it's a cold object when it surely isn't, um, puts doubts on their credibility of... Uh, the facts, right? So, yeah, I'll post a link to that if you want to add a comment to it. Navy engineers, they're not really pilots, these two. Engineers, get it wrong. And that was on Expedition X, if you want to go and check it out. Uh, season 3, episode 6, and there's part 2 of it next week. Which looks quite interesting, because uh, they go out and try and capture footage themselves. But, uh, the first one uh, is coming up here, if I can play it. Uh, without getting any problems with thing. So I've got a still image here of what they captured on their... 
Is it Skyhub they were using? Because um, it was able to determine whether it was a plane or not, which is good. This is half the problem we have in uh, ufology is people don't use the apps on their smartphones and uh, eliminate space and man-made objects in the sky. It's the basic thing you have to do. And document time, date and direction, GPS and all that sort of stuff. Um, so if you don't use the apps at the time, then and you don't know how to use offline, then you can submit it to MUFON, and the investigators can use the tools offline to uh, rule out planes and stuff for you. Uh, the experts, <laughs> and like Goofon and Third Phase of the Moon, who say themselves they're not experts, but claim everybody else can't be experts, which is nonsense. Uh, everybody's experts in their own field and combined together uh, you've got the, what you call the hive mentality uh, where all the minds pulled together uh, the, the majority wins basically right uh, if everybody says it's a balloon then it's a balloon uh, you got experts that look at video analysis and movement um, some people find out there's uh, there was a party that night where they released LED balloons. All that sort of stuff gets pulled together eventually and solves the case. Uh, a bit like the Chichilian one there uh, with a distant passenger jet leaving a contrail. And yet it still fooled the, the army or navy or whatever it was. And then you got the... The Puerto Rico one with the two fire balloons, which I talked about last time, uh, is not the best UFO footage at all. It was just a release of two fire balloons from a wedding party. And the heat, again, is thermal, so it's not actually a true image of what you're seeing. And, of course, it blends in with the background if the temperature is close to the background temperature, which it does oversee. And by then the candles are burning down as well. Uh, fire balloons generally burn for about 10 minutes. So uh, that's another thing. So this uh, Expedition X set up their own camera on the island. But they're not there to monitor it. They go off investigating um, forbidden areas. World War Two areas. <laughs> and I did actually get a capture of some of it here. Uh, I suppose we can play it, although it doesn't line up on the screen properly. Uh, there's some bug in the software, I guess. So. Uh, we got some playback here. Uh, so the object appears over here for some reason. We're inch off. <laughs> Okay, so it's right on the edge here. So this disappears out of nowhere on the image when they're playing it back. Oh, just moved. And the way it's moving to me doesn't look natural. Um, as in something in the sky, like a drone or a plane. And this thing then shoots upwards. Um, to me, it's behaving like a bug on the actual sensor screen. And because they're not there, they can't check it, right, at the time it was recorded. No comet changes directions like that. Look, it's over here now. Okay. I think it's just a bug running around the screen. Oh, f***. It's all over the place. And, of course, it's picking up the thermal... So at this stage, I can't really rule it out being a bug or a drone or a UFO. But um, yeah, go and check it out on the big screen. Go and download the episode and have a watch. Uh, see how it sort of appears out of nowhere. Uh, it's a bit unusual, but uh, if it's a bug flying towards the screen and then suddenly lands on the screen, uh, it may not be visible until it's a certain distance away from the camera. And then it lands and then it sort of walks downwards and then quickly runs back upwards again for some reason. 
<laughs> maybe maybe it realised it was heading off the edge. And then it ends up, it goes, lands there, runs down, then shoots off on an angle like this, goes across the screen, which we don't see, and then uh, gradually moves over this way, and then goes straight down again and disappears off the edge of the camera, which they say is heading towards the sea. I'm um, going to have a watch of it if you want to, um, that clip again. But like I said, it didn't come out very good, and because, um, you know, we might get copyright complaint about it. <laughs> but it really, it's making people want to go and watch it, of anything. Um, but still, that won't matter. As we talked about at the beginning of the show, uh, greed, greed is greed. Um, Discovery Channel, they don't see it as free advertising. And of course, you're not allowed to criticize this show, which we just did <laughs> for being uh, factual and inaccurate and misleading people that it was a really cold object when it wasn't. Uh, so, yeah, um, their own capture. But the next one, they got something more interesting. Capture on number one, number two next week. Uh, next one, they've got one that actually looks like it comes out of the sea and shoots upwards into the sky. Uh, whether that is a undersea drone that someone's flying around, we don't know. Uh, maybe you can work out the speed that it's accelerating and see if it fits in with the drone. So until that footage is released, uh, we can't do much about it. Uh, so yeah... Uh, be interesting to see what the other experts out there calculate. It's, I know there's a program that I've got where you can put in uh, all the specs of the camera, which we won't know, of course. <laughs> and you can work out um, how how fast objects go from the pixels from on the screen. Um, so I don't know. Someone might be able to get that information and sort it out improve or maybe the tv show will prove it with some experts uh what the speed is but uh, who knows uh, it's a tv show so the next thing is mick rest is saying uh, talking about the triangles again and this is where i don't agree with him again uh, he's put out this image here saying that these two images here on the thermal of the last core bell release is these two stars here and I just say bullshit because um, for a couple of reasons they look too far apart to be these two stars and when you enhance it no matter how it enhance it the points on the triangles aren't pointed in the same way which means this is a reflection of this one you know, you can see the pivot point here. And these two moved uh, together with the other object on the screen, which was what they're claiming to be a plane slash drone. And uh, the triangle shape was because of, of, of the bokeh. Uh, I think I got it spelt wrong there. I think it's B-O-K-E-H. But anyway... Um, but you can see here, I've done a simple enhancement here. So we'd expect these uh, sides of the triangle to all be going in the same direction. So you can see it's miles out here. And I've overlaid it and drawn around it and pulled them off. And you can see uh, the points are not lining up. Should be more turned. But this one here matches up with the other key on the screen of the plane so whether that's an image of the plane and that's a reflection of a ref that's a reflection and this is a reflection of a reflection because they were uh, lifting off the scope of the camera and it caused the reflection of the glass is what I'm saying uh, but anyway he's done some calculations here uh, based on those two stars being right. Here's another another slide I did, which has got the other object on it. 
So this was meant to be the aircraft. And here I think is reflection of it, not a star, because it was being lifted up on an angle. And this one up here, yeah, I enhanced it separately because it's even fainter. And you can see here comes that wee bit sharper, but you can see this the, the angles, the tips of these are pointing in, looking at each other. And then they're not in the same plane as these two. So it's got to be a mirror image. Um, this has got to be a, a reflection of that. And that's a reflection of that, I think. But uh, I haven't had anyone back me up on that, which is a bit of a shame. And MacQuest hasn't replied to it, as you can see. Um, no replies, right? Typical, but he's put out this YouTube video saying he's sussed it all out, which is bullshit. <laughs> I think it has been fairly conclusively demonstrated that this pyramid you are. Uh, see how these two moved uh, at the same time as this one here. Just see how it moves, right? It's got to be a reflection. Pyramid UFO. See that? That they're, they're all locked. These three are locked together. So it's actually just out of focus. Okay. So I think it has been fairly conclusively demonstrated that. Okay, here's the reflection coming in now. That this pyramid UFO is actually just out of focus, with the triangle shape being. Okay, so you saw at the end there that this shot off around there, but the star ended out of up focus up here. with the triangle. So let me watch it frame by frame. Uh, let's see if I can get it stepping. Uh, I still think it's a reflection. I can start to see reflection happening here now. See here? Something certainly happening over there. Uh, there it's blinking on the lights on the plane. Uh, these other white dots are noise. Me clicking each frame. So where's these two stars that he claims? Coming up, hopefully. There's the blinking light again. It seems to be regular. Like a collision avoidance light. Uh, looks like we missed it. Let's try again. Pyramid UFO. There they are there. So let's um, see how the star is going up at the same time as the craft. And then it fades. It's not constant. See how it's moving over this direction. That's moving over this direction. So where did it disappear to? Really demonstrated that. Okay. So it moves together. Blinks. They're going up together. See how much it's faded. So that one, that one's disappeared now. Now, has he bent the camera around so it's not reflecting? Or has it suddenly come up here? Flashing. So where did those two stars go? I reckon they're reflections. I uh, see. It started coming up with a reflection again just at the end. He stopped it. Let's just uh, see where we can see that again. 
Okay, it bends up here. Blinks. And it flies off. Now it's flying off now. I didn't see that time. Did I miss it? Seems to be something flashing there. Uh, okay. Bokey. It's probably just a plane because it moves and flashes like a plane. You can see a summary of all that in my last video. Okay, these are two reflections, I think. Yeah. But if you. And it overtakes the reflection here and fades away. Interesting questions remain for the sky identify nerds out there. Like these two triangles, what are they? They are actually stars in the constellation Achilles. Bullshit. Called Ocab and Ocab Borealis. They're, not, they're too far apart. I'll explain how I figured this out and how we can use it to get some rough estimates of the speed of the plane like object. When you are looking to. To identify let's stars. If, let's see if I can find an error in his logic here. It's really helpful to know the date, time, and location of the photo or video. We don't really have specifics about this video, but it seems to be related to the events described in the USS Russell logbook, July 14th, 2019, sometime after 9 in the evening. We also have a location, a latitude, and a longitude. Which and I believe says drones. Not airplanes. Drone, 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 drone. Have we got plane written there at all? Drone, drone. Uh, what's that one? Set and drift. What's the next one say? Multiple drones. There you go. Drones. Something spotted, drone spotted, spotted, drone spotted, drone, drone. No mention about planes. So, uh, military should know the difference between a drone and a passenger jet, you would think. Yes, we're in trouble. And it's going to shoot down the wrong things. Book, book. July 14th, 2019. Sometime after nine in the evening. We also have a location, a latitude, and a longitude. At the very start of the video, we see a constellation of stars. At Dylan DTV on Twitter discovered that this was actually uh, this is the clearest star formation that we got on his thing, and this does match up. But uh, how much he moved the scope and zoomed in, we can't really tell 100%, can we? Uh, and of course, if you've got reflections that look like stars, it's going to mislead you, which is basically what's happened here. I think Mick West is totally wrong. Actually, Jupiter, Antares, and some other stars. We can use the free software Stellarium, enter the location and the time, and then look towards Jupiter, a planet, not a star, and it is a perfect fit for around 10 past 9 Pacific time in that location. Watching the full video, there's another star that makes a brief appearance. And then we see these two. They're pretty much vertical, and the lower one is a bit brighter, but other. And you notice the direction they point in, right? Otherwise, not super distinctive, so hard to. Yeah, I don't. The reflections, mate. That one's pointing the same direction as that one, and that one's not. Find. I realised though that the camera did not move very far, and we could roughly track the mo motion by looking at the clouds after boosting the contrast. So I tracked from the initial position looking towards Jupiter past the single star, which is probably Russell Haig, and then on to the two final stars. Bingo! Pretty much at that exact spot there are the two stars, Ocab Bingo. and Ocab Borealis.
also called Epsilon Achilles. Uh, it's, uh, it seemed um, so. Where's the two stars here? <laughs> Well, let's just go back on that. Bingo! I think you can fit any two uh, lights in the sky to two stars in the sky, right? Uh, Bingo! Bingo! Okay. Pretty much at that exact spot, there are the two stars, Ocab and Ocab Borealis. Yes also called Epsilon Achille. This shows that the plane is moving in a straight line and that it flies just under OCAP. Without context, this kind of looks like there's another triangle flying around, but it's just the lowest star of the two, OCAP. Okay, so he's overlaying the star map with that there. Uh, it's not the same size and all that sort of business, right? Uh, I don't believe it. Uh, I think maybe those two stars are there, uh, but not those two in the footage, uh, those stars. I think they're just reflections because he lifted up the camera. Okay, why is it not playing now? And now we've got a good handle on where in the sky the plane is and the final no, stars. We haven't, Bingo. we haven't, we haven't, we haven't got a ha good handle. Let's see. So I track from the initial position. Okay. Because there was zooming in as well at some stage. It is that thing, whatever that is, probably a flagpole, maybe, on a, on a ship. So where's uh, the UFO there? Uh, it's not very good overlaying at all. Uh, could have done some better filters here, mate. Right there it is there in the middle, I think. And he's claiming the two stars are up here, was it? Let's see, where's it come up with the two stars again? So the zoom in out, is he saying? To me, it looked like they're zoomed in. And now he's saying it's where the two uh, stars appear, which is what I call reflections. I don't remember them hanging out to the side there when this thing was being zoomed in or out. Um, they seemed to, seemed to be zoomed in, if anything, and they they shot off this direction above. Also it. called Epsilon Achille. No, I just don't think that's correct. You have to do better than that. This shows that the does that uh, antenna on the ship the flagpole does that sort of disappear because that's a good reference point. 
So I tracked from the initial position looking towards Jupiter past the same. Single star, which is probably Russell Haig, and then on. You see here the flag. The flagpole was crucial, I think. See how it's going on a slight angle now, which means uh, lifting up the camera, causing some light reflection to happen. Onto the two final stars. Bing. See that it's, it's, it was being lifted up, and you can see the edge of the scope here. I think it's a reflection still. And the angle of that post changed enough to match up uh, why you'd get the, the mirror effect. Bingo. Pretty much at that exact spot, there are the two stars, Ocab and Ocab Borealis, also called Epsilon Achille. This shows that the plane is moving in a straight line and that it flies just under Ocab. Without context, this kind of looks like there's another triangle flying around. But it's uh, is that just fitting the narrative there? Where it flies in a straight line? This shows that the plane is moving in a straight line and that it flies... And you can see the flagpole is going on an angle. So how can that move in a straight line if the flagpole's not constantly straight? Mm. Just under OCAP. Without context, this can... Uh, let's see. Uh, where's the plane? Let's see if it moves in a straight line or not. The position looking. Where is it? Toward. Can't see it in his so called overlay. You can see that they rotate the rotating camera all around. Okay, there's the thing. Single star. Which is probably Similarly. Russell Haig. And then onto the two. Then it gets brighter for some reason. Final stars. And you can see the angle of it. I think you need to overlay all those to see how much angle it is and if it matches the angle of the reflection. Bingo. Pretty Bingo. I didn't even see where the plane was in all those images to see if it was a straight line or not. And uh, this is as bad as the two navy guys, I think. Much at that exact spot, there are the two stars, Ocab and Ocab Borealis, also called Epsilon Achille. This shows that the plane is moving in a straight line and that it flies just under Ocab. Without context, <coughs> this kind of looks like there's another triangle flying straight around. Line. But it's just the lowest star of the two, Ocab. I bet it's not a straight line. I bet it's um, angled for starters. A diagonal line, maybe he means, but uh, yeah, uh, uh, I think he's just moving it, the images around to where he wants it to fit. Because you ain't got a, you haven't got a reference point in all those. That's constant. He's trying to fit it to a star map, right? Um, like if you had the moon as a as a reference point in all those images, it would have been nice, you know. <laughs> or a far away pan shot to see how far they were filming. You can see when he makes it to match up with the star map, how much he has to zoom out. And now we've got a good handle on where in the sky the plane is and what the stars are. We can have a bash at estimating its speed. If we take these two stars, Antares and Larawag, we can enter in their celestial coordinates to this calculator and we can see they're about 7.8 degrees apart. We can then scale that up to the diameter of the night vision camera and we find the field of view is 17.2 degrees. At this point in the video, the plane is in the middle. And don't you just love all this geometry and mathematics? No! <laughs> okay, so it's, it's uh, all wrong if those are not stars, right? And OCAB is nearly at the edge. We know that the plane passes OCAB, so the time it takes to get there is the time it will take to traverse just under half the field of view, about 8 degrees. We time that and it's 10 seconds. So the angular speed of the plane at this point is about 0 0.8 degrees per second. Looking at the traffic in the area, a typical altitude is around 33,000 feet. 
OCAB is at around 42 degrees. So let's round that up to 45 degrees as we don't know the exact time. So the plane will be about as far away horizontally as it is high. Okay, so which way was the ship moving? Was it stationary? Was it anchored? I guess it would have been moving along. And of course, where was the, the post, the flag post in that? Was that the front of the ship? Uh, were they spinning the camera around? And the flagpole got in the way? Or are they using the flagpole for uh, focusing? We can then use Pythagoras to get a line of sight distance of around 45,000 feet. 45,000 feet. In typical planes are 38. Okay. Assuming it's flying perpendicular to us, then we can take the 0 0.8 degrees per second and see how far along the circumference of a circle of radius 45,000 feet will give you 0 0.8 degrees. That will show how far the plane moves in one second, i.e. the speed in feet per second. We can work this out and do the unit conversion to knots with Google. 45,000 times 2 times pi divided by 360 times 0 0.8 feet per second in knots, which gives 372 knots, the ground speed. So that's consistent with the plane. Uh, but given that OCAB is on a bearing of uh, 100 degrees and the planes in the region are generally on a heading of around 40, then the plane is probably not flying perpendicular to the camera, so the actual speed will be a bit higher, like 400 plus knots, which is the same as the traffic overhead. What if it were just 700 feet up, around 1,000 feet away? That's about 8 knots, around 9 miles per hour, so it could be a nearby drone moving slowly, but I think a plane is a better fit as we know there were planes there, and the angular speed fits, and the lights flash exactly like a plane. Ah, there's that uh, thing I was looking for. See how that one seemed to come out of nowhere? That looks a reflection again. And it shoots off in the same direction. Uh, so, you're saying the plane at 45,000 feet? Uh, so let's try and debunk that, because... Um, Let's see what's flying in the sky at the moment. Oh, yeah, we can't use that because they disabled us. Unless I try and trick it somehow. Uh, let's use... Uh, oh, damn it. Let's just use crappy... Uh, what's it? Microsoft Edge. Hey, country man, how's it going? I'm trying to debunk McQuist at the moment. Uh, actually, you could have just used that link there. Now, he's saying that those planes flying onto LA had to be 45,000 feet in that thing. Oh, actually, I wonder what plane fight is. I wonder the other one. Unless it gives an error to error. error. I suppose it's not logged in anymore. I don't think I got gold membership anymore. But we don't need it. We just want to see um, LAX planes coming over the island. Uh, what's it say there? Okay, take us there. Okay, so where's the island? <laughs> now you can see all the planes. LAX, is that the one? Yep, Los Angeles. And you can see there's a big flight puff heading down to San Diego. Uh, here's some islands here. Is that what we're looking for? Catalina Island, was it? What was the island that were flying past? Now these I would have thought would have been coming down in altitude, not 45,000 feet. So let's have a look at some of these ones. What's that one say? Dun dun dun. Where's the altitude? Altitude, altitude, why can't I see you? There, yeah, it's only 16,000 feet, not even 45, not even close. 
these ones just taken off. They'll be climbing in altitude. Uh, 18, probably going up. There you go, gradually going up. Uh, I thought there'd be more traffic heading towards LA. Uh, so what was the... Uh, yeah. What was the location of the Nimitz? Triangles, so it was what are they? Uh, not, not the Nimitz, uh, this one here, the Corbell one. Uh, do you know, can you remember? Uh, on the side chat. Was it uh, Catalina Island that was passing? Or was it some other island? Uh, I think it was some other island, wasn't it? Um, let's see if I can find out. Corbell. Uh, triangles. It was some sort of ship. But I'm not sure what location it was now. Uh, ship crew. Is that the one? Oh no, that's the balloon one. Have we got any details here on these stupid web pages? So, yeah, I still don't agree with Mick West on those two being stars. Um, and the altitude being 45,000 feet. That sounds too high. Uh, from, yeah, what's all the specs? Uh, triangle, uh, Sugoth, uh, Mystery, uh, Naval Personnel, Security to avoid disclosure information. Of course, we can't give you information, so we can't debunk it. Um, Our training ranges or destinated airspace, including those inclusions. Um, he did have a, a map there at one stage, didn't he? Yeah, let's see. Uh, what's he got it listed as? Out 0 0.8 degrees per second. Looking at the traffic in the air. Okay, that's what we've got up, isn't it? Uh, there's the island where they seem to turn for some reason. San Diego. So, where was the ship? Uh, that the location wasn't disclosed, I guess. <laughs> So, what's he got here? He's got one at four, four, two thousand feet. So, did it go higher than that? So he's using it based on that one. So he's cherry picked one there. And we haven't got any live ones, hurry. Apart from that one's coming down. Copy and paste link I sent to you. Global. Uh, what is it? See, that one's coming from a distance. Can we work out what the maximum altitude was? Probably not. Probably have to look up the aircraft number. 
and play it back separately, which they won't be able to do unless I log in with gold membership. Uh, so what's this link you sent me? Uh, that's Christchurch. <laughs> yeah, what about Christchurch? Exit out. There's a better version of Flight Radar. All right. Uh, what's it called? Global Change or something. Is it free? Can you roll back data? Because a lot of these ones, although they might have better maps or whatever. Uh, there's all these planes coming into LA, is it? LA. And some coming in. What's that one say? 35,000 feet. Um, 37,000 feet. 34. 33. Yeah, it's not too bad, this uh, site, is it? Um, I suppose we better add it to the list. Our grown list of toy, toy, uh, tools and <laughs> toys. <laughs> Global ads Bex Exchange. Globe ADS Kind of strange name. Tracking three thousand three hundred eighty-six aircraft. Uh, that's pretty. That's, that's not many though. Um, save it. I think there's only about sixteen. Oh, where did that one go? Okay, that'll do. I need to put it on the other one too. Uh, yeah, I was just trying to find. Have they listed where the island that was next to? Was there some GPS coordinates that sort of help us out? I think they're basing it on star locations, right? There's enough clues in the video. So he's taking one that's going straight to Catalina Island, basically. So that's all we have to do. Uh, he's found, found one at 40,000 feet. Oh, yeah, I want to add that on. So I don't forget. And this one as well. Probably should put it up the top, though. Move it up here. Now we've got three of them. And that one should be moved up to. Perfect. Now let's go back to it. Let's go a little bit. What have we got now? 34, okay, we've got one at 41,000 feet. Uh, do they go any higher though? That's what we want to know. 40, 39, 40, that's almost 40. What's that there? Hawaii? Is it? Sure is. Oh, yes. Why are you there? I guess it's in darkness at the moment, isn't it? 
So all these would be coming downwards. That one would be going upwards. 36. 39. 38. But I haven't seen any over 40. Those calculations work at 45. I think that sort of makes his calculations wrong in my book. 36. In fact, are there any planes over the sea at 45? Let's just have a look around. 38. 33, 34, 37. Okay, let's have a look. Um, do what's the maximum? What is the maximum? Altitude. Got to use the right words, I suppose, uh, for uh, passenger jet. Let's see what we get for that. And sure enough, it talks about 45,000 feet there. Damn it. <laughs> the highest commercial airline altitude was 60,000 feet by Concorde. The highest military air brief and engine was the SR-71 about 90,000 feet. The highest airline of flying today reaching 45,000 feet. The highest business flying jet today reaches 51,000 feet. Damn. <laughs> so we can't sort of rule it out then. Even though... Uh, we'd need to know if any jets that day were flying at 45,000 feet. And then we probably could rule it out. And here's why planes fly at 36,000 feet. Okay. I suppose they want to fly at lower altitudes to save fuel, is my guess. Um... It's common situation for travellers who fasten your seatbelt, blah, blah, blah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are now at our cruising altitude, 30,000 feet. It's time to kick back and wait for refreshments. Uh, how many of us have stopped to wonder why planes go this high up in the first place? According to US Today, the common cruising altitude for most commercial planes is between 33,000 and 42,000 feet. There you go. There's no mention of 45s. Or between 6 and nearly 8 miles above the sea level. Typical aircraft fly around 35,000 to 36,000 feet. To put that in perspective, the peak of Mount Everest measures at 29,000 feet. Well, that's a good idea to fly higher than the highest mountain, I guess. <laughs> Especially if you put it on automatic pilot and the pilot's asleep. <laughs> but this is why we pressurize cabins so you don't feel as if you're literally climbing Mount Everest. Okay, there... The area called the lower stratosphere, which is just above troposphere, lowest part of the atmosphere, uh, according to UCAR Centre of Science. Flying in this area has many benefits that make flying one of the leading ways for travellers to get from one place to the other. Fuel! Didn't I say that? <laughs> I said it would be something to do with fuel. So if you go higher than that, uh, you'd have to get the right combination of air mixture, right? Now it's burn uneven. Uh, what's it say? The biggest reason for this attitude lies with fuel efficiency. 
The thin air creates less drag. Yep. Which means the plane can use less fuel in order to maintain speed. Less res resist wind resistance, more power, less effort, so to speak. Spending less on fuel is great for airlines for obvious reasons. Keep in mind though, a plane engines also need oxygen in order to work. Yep, that's what I said. According to the traveller, since they need this molecule to create combustion, blah, blah, blah. Avoiding traffic and hazards. Yes, uh, there is traffic up there. Quite a lot, actually. <laughs> and it depends on certain uh, times. Flying higher means planes can avoid birds, drones, and light aircraft and helicopters which fly at lower altitudes. Weather. Have you ever wondered why the view outside your plane window can be sunny one moment and raining the next? Descending into your destination airport that has everything to do with altitude. Turbulence still happens on airplanes, but you may be surprised to know that it happens a great deal less because of the high altitude of many commercial flights. Uh, planes run into air pockets and fierce winds. And we've seen it on the chart previously. I think the last live show I looked at showed that the wind speeds vary greatly at every 500 uh, feet, wasn't it? Emergency high altitude can also give pilots one precious comedy when they're up in the air. So if all your engines cut out, you've got time to think. <laughs> Uh, different planes, different altitudes. Not all planes are made to cruise at the same altitude. Uh, it's determined by the current weight in atmospheric conditions at the time. Of course, now they want to weigh passengers, apparently. Uh, they didn't used to worry about too much about weight, but now they are. Normally you could smuggle heavy stuff into your hand luggage and take it with you, right? As you'd pay extra. Uh, you won't be able to get away with that sort of stuff anymore because they want to weigh you and the luggage. Uh, who makes the call? There you go. So, yeah. Uh, hopefully we'll learn something new there. And as we saw in that chart, uh, it was all over the place. Uh, I think the average there was about 34,000 feet, so. So we can't sort of debunk McWest uh, based on 45, because there are some planes that can do it. And you can see a lot of planes over this way. Does it tell us how many is on there now? Just have to click off it. No. Does it tell us how many is on the screen? Just crazy amount. But this hasn't got the playback function, has it? Uh, maybe it has. See, that's what the others have. Um, you can play back the flight of a particular plane, uh, which is we need for looking up UFA cases, but I don't see it here. But it might be there. Um, so I might have to point it out. Uh, let's see. As we can search, see if it says. See, that one would be pretty good to see whether it got up to 45,000 feet or not. But what we saw was 40 downwards, not over, I say. So. 
so has this got a playback function? Uh, if it is, they'll probably charge you for it like all the others. ADSB flight tracker. Playback. Okay, what's that saying there? Twenty twenty one. Flight aware again was limited on playback. The most mobile friendly. Well, it seems to work on Windows 10, all right. Debating whether $10 a month is a lot. Well, it is if you like me that doesn't have that kind of money. <laughs> and you only use it occasionally. It should be pay as you go right rather than the monthly sub should just pay you use um, time you use it where you want to go back as far as possible a year is not enough three years is not enough sometimes if you're looking at old ufo cases uh didn't see anything about playback function Okay, it talks about playback there. Oh. Yeah, I can't see how you get it playback then. Uh, maybe they've got a function. Anyway, come back to that one. Uh, what was that? Leftovers from last time. What happened there? Uh, right, they've added the sidebar on here, eh? Uh huh. Yeah, I don't like that. Okay. <laughs> Close. Anyway, MacQuest. Uh, did I post that one? I can't remember now. Countryman. Countryman. I don't think I did, so... The Baton MacQuest. It's not important how fast it was going anyway, uh, but uh, the reflections versus stars to me does sort of matter. It might be close to the location, but might actually, um, even though those stars might be wrong, he might actually just got close to where it was anyway, you know. <laughs> um, there was a lot of cloud cover there. Uh, yeah, so see what you think of it. Uh, the fact that these don't um, point the same way tells me they can't be the uh, same as all the other bokeh bokehs on, on screen that uh, something had caused it to bend, reflection, whatever. So, yeah. Spent enough time on that one, didn't we? 
green pyramids. Assuming it's flying perpendicular to us, then we can take the by 360 times 0 0.8. Uh, let's just get rid of that. And third phase of the moon. Uh, who else we got to talk about? Anyone? It's a good thing what they've been up to. Uh, looks like he's been up to cobblers here. They can not explain this. Uh, it's happening again. Uh, let's just have a quick look at his ones. <laughs> Hey, Maybe what's up, guys? It. Tyler here with Secure. Oh, uh, here we are. Uh, promoting the mix. Bye, bye, bye. Okay. It's not straight into a UFO topic, but uh, boy, send me money. Team, before we start today's video, here is the photo of the day sent in by a fan from the NYC. And it turns out we have a lot of Secure. Uh, you're Phil. Bit embarrassed now, won't you? Being a picture taken, buying his merchandise. Thirteen fans out in New York City. Who likes to watch uh, Tyler's um, deception as well as his fake videos from the past? And uh, as you can see, the viewer is wearing her Secure Team shirt with an amazing bike behind her. And as a motorcycle rider myself, man, that thing is awesome. She says that she's sorry she cropped the T-shirt. But that's totally fine. Looks awesome. Again, you can get at the merch shop. And for the next five days only, if you visit go, the people, official go, Secure Team tee and gear up and support the truth. Now, on to our first. I don't know how you breathe for a mask that's got some plastic uh, logo on the front. That's got to be terrible for your health, that is. Uh, I'm glad I live in New Zealand away from that craziness in America. <laughs> First clip. So this was posted to Twitter of what appears to be something interacting yeah, with a deer that was caught on one of these night cam videos. And I don't have to remind you about the history of UFO. Yeah, okay, we debunked that one ages ago. That was on Goofon slash Third Phase of the Moon, and it looks like a bird heading towards a barn where the camera's on. Uh, some sort of black porthole like circular or square object in the middle no there's a wing and there's another wing and there's the body of the bird you can even see the beak <laughs> with two black lines coming off each side of it going up into yeah sparrow this is that is a smudge of a bird <laughs> long exposure uh, motion blue. On to our next piece of footage. This UFO was captured and posted to the channel Tim Wells Bow Hunter. So they were out doing their thing out in the desert. And uh, so I spent quite a long time analyzing that, as you know, and uh, debunked it as possible bunch of balloons, wasn't it? So he's uh, way behind. This month's is old now. Metallic object with the sun glistening off of it, and it's. That's a bunch of points. I gotta keep going. Some similarities. All right. So lately, we've been posting a lot of videos of strange objects. And this thing has just been stationary up in the sky, um, in the little town. About 30 miles away from where I live. Looks like it's kind of between here and there, maybe directly over there. I'm not sure. Okay, is it a good year blimp or something? Uh, this thing. Advertising balloon. Sorry, my daughter's in the background singing. Uh, it looks like a hot air balloon, actually, doesn't it? That thing there. Tear shape. Looks like a hot air balloon. That's going to hang in the air quite a long time. It was that high up. Um, 
And this thing has just been stationary in the sky the entire time I've been here, which is like 10 minutes. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but there's like an aura around it um, on video. It on video, yes, it's called uh, 264 video compression. That's how it works. In like person and by the naked eye. It uh, compresses the color information rather than the pixel information. And from frame to frame, it works out what pixels have changed on the, on the frame. It only overlays the changes as well. Uh, that's how it, it looks uh, like there's a the new MP4 container has these new codecs, as they call them. And the latest one is 265, which is even a more clever compression for 4K videos. There's an aura around it as well. It's almost like... Um... Uh, so to me, that's just a hot air balloon. And they didn't, it hasn't even zoomed in on that. You can see the shape of it round is in the area stationary in the sky that I could get and I'm totally lost for words as so he seemed in probably not the best of images either uh, where it was a te proper tear shape as to what this could be so big thanks to this viewer for sending that in and lastly today this uh, I think we're looking more underneath the balloon now, and the basket would be that about there. Before we had a nice tear shape uh, happening. It was captured and posted by a fellow UFO research YouTuber, Mavi777, who got in a clip of some very... Mavi, he's a bloody... another fraud channel. ...strange phenomena... ...that works with, um, security. happening up in the sky where it appears there are two glowing objects just sitting there within this cloud streak and I have no idea what this could be. Uh, we have a balloon. <laughs> That's how bright it would be if the sun shined off it. Two river balloons, two mile balloons. Depends how far away it is and how much it seems. So what do you guys think? Here are some... Well, it's got a balloon shape to it, hasn't it? So... Different filters that I'm going to put up on here. Uh, I can explain it. Is it some sort of strange weather phenomena that is natural? Is it unnatural? And we see this cloud streak coming off of it, almost like something possibly jumped into our atmosphere or through our atmosphere. Okay, that other one actually looks like it's further away. Could it be two hot air balloons? Um, that's sort of traveling together. But like the last one we saw, maybe it's in the same day. I don't know. About this amazing time. Uh, so that was totally boring. Okay, next one. Uh, what's this about their brain? Very anomalous UFO footage and mysteries in our skies. Uh, today, I wanted to post this quick video for you guys because it seems to be happening again. Now, if you remember... Uh, what date was this? Uh, what's that say? May 17th? And currently it's May 27th. For a year or two back, I made multiple videos about this situation. And I'm not going to speak a whole lot on this video because those two previous videos pretty much explain it. And I'm going to put the links to each of those two videos as you're seeing here uh, at the end screen of this video. So be sure to click those and watch those. But basically, there is or what has been deemed to be, you know, there's a the probability to be some sort of high energy weapon that is being used on american u.s embassy workers it happened in china 
when it first started it happened to workers in russia where people would be sitting in a boardroom and all of a the sudden they would get these terrible headaches and migraines um, they would lose their balance they would forget their names their memory would get shot they would even forget how to speak i okay, so it's still not proven though um it's not like they've gone into the room where the person's been sick and used some sort of triangulation to um, see where there's a beam of microwave coming from or whatever uh, they're using. They'd probably be microwave. Um, or oh, high frequency sound is the other one. High frequency sound and low frequency sound. So they're the things you would have to measure to prove a point. Um, but yeah, no doubt they are experimenting with that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, that's just another story. So someone should be able to prove that rather than doing fantasy stories about it. Okay, what else we got? More mysterious about this is the fact that American officials are completely silent and it's long past time for the Director of National Intelligence to take the lead and establish a multi-agency task force under their command. Quoting from okay, one against national response to the sound about them Lauren. and we told you about them here on special report in 2016 in some cases permanent traumatic brain injury new indications suggest the incident air force and tech firm uh, wouldn't it wouldn't be easy just to put some um, bad stuff in the food they eat in the hotel or whatever that would probably be a lot easier way of doing it, you know, like they've done with the past uh, Russian spies, where uh, they, they sprinkle some on their food when they're not watching or drink, and it's radioactive. Pyrus have developed a mobile high energy. They'll probably be demonetized. Somnia 10 for 15%. Yeah, they'll be demonetized because it's fake news. <laughs> well, it's uh, pure fantasy and it's not proven at this stage anyway um that's secure team done with and third phase okay so if you haven't heard that um they've got dr greer as you know is a charlatan the biggest one out there plugging him again and he's now attacking Lou saying that he's actually a disinformation agent, which is hilarious because that's what uh, uh, most of us have been saying about uh, Dr. Greer. And he's been talking about the same stuff for years, and he's a bit of a, a con man when it comes to his courses and how much he charges people to see stuff, and so-called light beings, which um, I've debunked. Uh, if you ain't seen my collection on Dr. Greer, I guess, guess you are missing out. I go over most of his claims and debunk them all. Uh, there are some really good um, good cases as well, which are really hard to debunk. But um, he just uses the footage <laughs> for his own movie. But still, we managed to still... Uh, have some doubts about whether it was a UFO in the footage or not, whether it was uh, something else that we're seeing, a man-made object. So, listen to me, all this is on Dr. Greer at the moment uh, for challenging Lou, and that just came out recently, has it, four hours ago? Uh, let's have a quick listen to that nonsense. <laughs> going on lately. Dr. Greer's dropping names. He's kind of not very pleased what the narrative is going on within the major media, 60 minutes. And he's thinking the advice for their support. Yeah, it's all about money. So this guy, to me, he never looks serious. Uh, he's always trying not to burst out laughing. 
You just watch. I had about a two hour discussion with him last night. So and uh, let me tell you, he's unhinged. He's like a, a constant smirk, you know? If I was, if I was hosting like that new, on camera and uh, smirking all the time, to me, that would be like a turn away. He's not happy at all with what's going on. This threat, this constant narrative of aliens are a threat. We got to watch out for them. Yeah, but he's Mr. Space Brothers, and um, any anyone that's realistic knows that there's good and bad in all races of humans, so why wouldn't it be the same with aliens? <laughs> so not all of them are Space Brothers. He's not happy at all. So this is what we're doing. We're going to send him money, and then he'll be happy, because that's what he wants. Dr. Greer has agreed to come on Third Phase of Moon's platform and discuss and debate with Luis Elizondo, Nick Pope, <laughs> Jeremy Cor They're after the views. They're after the views, guys. Don't do it. Don't watch them. Don't be tempted. Wait till someone takes a clip from it and shows it under fair use instead. Uh, so, yeah, here's here trashing. Let's play a clip of it. This is the ramping up of the false disclosure that we warned about in 1999. False when we wrote disclosure. The paper when the she, yeah. she basically was sending this long text, whatever story text. Oh, no, saying, those, those you are right. Kids talking about, about UFOs. It. Isn't that After nice? 60 though? minute. Thing. And there's the original one here. Pick here's what those idiots have to say. What uh, Daniel Sheehan is trying to do is to get Luis Elizondo and then perhaps after him, some of the others to actually admit that they know that there is not a threat from the UFOs and that they have been coerced into doing so. Recently on the internet, uh, on a YouTube interview that's now been taken down, Daniel Sheehan admitted that there was an invested, uh, inspector general of the Pentagon had been pulled in to look into complaints from Luis Elizondo at the insistence of Daniel Sheehan about him being uh, threatened with loss of his security clearance because not because he was disclosing classified material, but because he went off the leash uh, and was not wanting to continue to say the falsehood that these were an alien threat. And I think in large part because close encounters. So that doesn't make him a disinformation uh, agent then because he's gone off script. So what are they trying? What's he trying to say? enormous amounts of information like that so these, those are our hours and they were filmed at the tip of the spear of disinformation going out to the media which is of course Luis Elizondo who was sent on this mission my understanding is you know people are so he's calling him a disinformation agent okay let's uh, see if we can search that which is uh, ironic because that's what this guy is. <laughs> He's all about the money. He's not interested in UFOs. Let's see. This info. There we go. Uh, going in too much. There's a professional. Here we go. One minute in. There we are. I must have skipped it. Elizondo is a professional disinformation agent putting out false intelligence about the UFO matter in through the mainstream media. The reason Danny is, uh, Mr. Sheehan is doing this, um, we've had a long discussion. Uh, so I must have skimmed past it just some, too much before. So yeah, you can see that's going to cause a bit of a storm in a cup, isn't it? But uh, that's exactly what they want to do. Uh, they're always attacking Lou, aren't they? But Lou's always been the renegade, right? He's gone off script. So, yeah, he's not a disinformation agent in that case. He's, he's, so it seems like, like double, double meaning in his words here. Lou's telling it straight where, where the authorities are not happy that he's doing that. <laughs> 
Yes, you can leak stuff, but you've got to tell them what we want you to tell them. Anyway. Can't play too much. I um, played a wee bit under fair use there. Uh, not that these guys are on anything to do with fair use. But the fact that they're teaming up with Greer in the first place means that the the frauds, right? You know, um, lots of bad things about this guy. Whether he was uh, really interested in UFOs at one stage because he had a site in, made up a group, and then the government were interested in his database, so invited him to the Pentagon, uh, that may be all right. But then after that, it went downhill with Greer, didn't it? So started charging people $2,000 a head to go out in the desert and bang drums and uh, see what looks like balloons or birds flying high up or bats at night time. Uh, a lot of it's staged, you know, and of course that famous one with the flares out uh, out to sea, was it, or lake? Uh, no, it was the sea, wasn't it? The coast of uh, California, was it? I uh, can't remember now. But anyway, um, yeah. So he's got, they've got another video up here, which we'll probably have a look at. I think we've covered the other ones. And maybe wrap up on that one here. I don't think there's anything else that I want to talk about today. Just uh, watch um, oh, Skinwalker Ranch, Ranches Out uh, Season 2. So far it's been pretty boring, up to Episode 3, I think it is. Uh, they've been trying to put laser grids up to see if anything happens in this light. But they claim that a square box appeared to them at a campfire and vanished as soon as they made, made notice of it. A uh, square box hovering in the sky and then just suddenly turned off. So is that some sort of cloaking technology? doesn't mean it's alien, of course. It could be some government, um, uh, what do you call it, drone that has some cloaking. So, yeah, uh, maybe there's something underground there that the government doesn't want them to dig into. Maybe some <laughs> leftover nuclear stuff, who knows, a nuclear river underneath. <laughs> uh, maybe some tunnels underneath, because it's near the airport there as well, isn't it? The Denver airport. Uh, yeah, so they don't want them digging down too far, destroy the tunnel system they got probably between the airport and some other base, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> it may not turn out to be aliens at all. It might be just that they're getting too close to military information. But there are certainly a lot of microwaves there and uh, strangeness in the saw itself, you know. Uh, with Obviously, there's got to be caverns underneath because they the water they did a water test and disappeared but we know they got a lot of probably got a lot of uh minerals and crystals in the rock which causes piezoelectric effect and microwave energy and all that sort of stuff and mucks around with the phones and uh electronics you know if the, the guy the security guy has got a broken screen on his iphone that's not going to be really good to start with is it um so, yeah, and, and then it goes all crazy and all that, saying, oh, no one can hack that. Well, it's quite easy to hack smartphones, you know. NSA knows how to do that. They were saying, oh, NSA wouldn't even know how to do that. Uh, so it's quite a laughable thing to walk around these PhD experts. Um, they're obviously not PhDs in computer science and security and... Uh, uh, common sense <laughs> but anyway and of course um, Expedition X has got their stuff out and who's the other one that's doing UFO stuff at the moment uh, there was another one I think uh, can't think of it at the moment 
but uh, go and check out those two at least. Um, so let's see this last video, see what it's about. Video that we need to share with our audience. And that's what we're gonna do. Let's just start it off with Jaime Mosan from Latin America, something in the skies. On Jaime or Jamie Mosan. <laughs> <laughs> to be if you say his name right um straight away to be suspicious of what you're going to see here is a possible fake so uh carry on unexplainable take a look at this <laughs> okay it's near power line uh does it follow the power line or a straight line here so just keep an eye on that because we know you can hang things on power lines Fishing wire with something underneath and it can slide along. Is this on a slope? Okay, it looks like it's cutting through all wires here. No, and that's going down again. Could it be a drone? Or is it going up? It's going up and down, up and down, isn't it? Between the wires. Seems to be going in a certain pattern here, like a sine wave. Going up, down, and up again. And then it stops. Almost like uh, it's on a bit of string. Uh, I don't think it's CGI. Uh, look, uh, the cable seems to be the same sort of fade and fadiness here. So, does it mean it's on these wires? Uh, what could it be, though? Jaime does it again. We got this video this morning and we're kind of like shocked. We're like, what is this? Could this be maybe a kite in the sky, but you really don't see no oscillation. This thing remains pretty static up. And on oscillation, we saw it going in a sine wave up and down, up and down. Uh, so that's wrong information. There, and you can see it high above the telephone poles and the wires itself. Yeah, it wasn't above the telephone poles. It was moving between the lower wire and the middle wire on it. You can hear the the people. They're they're very kind of they're into it. They're they're still. Unfortunately, we couldn't hear the people because you had the music over top to try and hide what was being said or any noise of a remote control. Filming this and they don't know what it is. Where's the sound? Have we got the original video? Where they're not messed around with it. Nope. Trying to advertise the album. <laughs> Was it that one? Granted the third phase because they don't want no bull crap. And that looks like a different time of day if it is. Everything keeps going. Just take a deep breath yeah. in. Looks like a different it's video, isn't it? It's our talk in here, but uh Deb. You just take a deep breath there. Have a bite of your chip. So there's something else completely. Bugger. That must be further on. So what are we looking at here? I didn't hear I didn't hear the background sounds. Let's uh, just go back. Um Latin America, something in the skies unex Yeah, there's no talking. It's all music. It's going up and down between the middle and the bottom. Was yeah, look. it's 
speeds up. There's certainly a pattern to it. And we can't hear if there's any motors or anything. So that was going like that. That suggests to me that there's some wires there hanging off the poles. Man, we didn't hear the background. Oh, there we go. We hear it and then they cut them off. We heard it for a second. That's it. Take a look at this. <laughs> So I heard a lot of car noise in the background, or it could have been a jet engine even. So it could have been a drone going up and down on a programmed sine wave, or something on the wires, I don't believe it's an alien craft. So they've got a close-up of it. So what are we looking at here? Could that be a drone? To me it looks like there's going to be some wire that runs between rollers in the middle there. Uh, Paraline robot again. Um, Paraline robot. Uh, we didn't see it on a cable though. These are definitely on the power line. Uh, and this has got edited out. I don't think it's anything like this. Uh, it's the closest one we've got to it. Hole in the middle. Okay, but could it be a drone? I see they've got a drone here. Power line drone. Let's have a look. Oh, well, we do use uh, drones now for checking lines. Oh, how about now? Looks like it caught fire, or well, one crashed and caught fire. Well, I've not seen any parallel ones that fits that all the standard um, four or five blade things. Four is most common. One, two, three, four, five blades. One, two, six blades. Now, there's a four one. Oh, what's happening here? Flying throwing drone helps remove uh, net. Oh. So they burn the cable that's wrapped around, shorten out the power lines. So that's what that was. And we'll learn something new.
Now, if they can do that, <laughs> uh, you can see how they could weaponize it, attack people with flamethrowers and stuff. Uh, and then have a bomb on it that blows up as well. Suicide miss missions. Yeah, uh, could it be a kite and going up and down in a sine wave? That's another thing. Uh, box kites, maybe. Uh, would have to have a gap in between. Hmm, doesn't sort of fit, does it? Let's see. It's out of focus as usual, spud cam. To me it looks like it's got connection points running between. One, two. Could be a kite. I uh, haven't seen them moving in a sine wave pattern before though. Yeah, it could be a box kite. Uh, what does anyone out there think? Uh, there's no one out there, but uh, anyone that watches this may be able to put a comment. So it looks similar to the number of links in this one here. But it's not a box. Box kite, box kite. Thin, thin. Thin one. Could be, yeah. can't rule it out. How about a remote controlled? Uh, square kite, maybe. Let's see what comes up for that. And these are remote controlled without cables. None of a square shape. Mm, rectangle, maybe. Rectangle. <clears throat> Try different keywords, you never know. So it might pop up. Uh, box cards. I don't say whether it's remote control or not. It has got some box kites here. Glowing box. Oh, well, there you go. It does have it listed as uh, remote controlled. Yeah. 
Kite does make the most sense though, doesn't it? Um, but nothing's sort of popping out there, but it does look like you can eat remote control on box kites. Let's have a look at that page there. Uh, how do we get rid of that? Uh huh. Watch this one here. It's got tubes. Uh, how do we get rid of that? A large power sled. Looks uh, right. What's that one? Thirty six inches. Uh, it didn't really help us too much. Also, we've probably only seen it from the side. Let's have a look again. Did they replay it? <laughs> so you notice how it was stationary there before it took off. Take a look at this. <laughs> this here. <laughs> and it's, I wasn't moving at the time. <laughs> and it goes up and down. It's got to be remote control, surely. Could it be a wingsuit? Wingsuit glider guy. Going down. But why would it stop there? South America, don't trust it. Jaime does it again. We got this video this morning and we're kind of like shocked. We're like, what is this? Could this be maybe a kite in the sky, but you really don't see no oscillation. This thing remains pretty static up there and you can see it high above the telephone poles. And normally when they say, what could it be? Normally it's used for misdirection and it is a kite. So they probably know it's a kite. The wires itself, you can hear the, the people, they're, they're very kind of... So it's interesting to know what's going on. And we even have more videos. So let's just get to... So, yeah. What uh, is, I don't know. Kind of looks like it's going to be a RC kite to me. With maybe some GPS so it can control itself. Um, 
Looks familiar. Um, I'm pretty sure I have seen that as a racing kite or something like that. Um, what can we search on that we haven't already? Hmm, maybe we have to come back to that one. If more information comes in. Ah, could it be that? That would make sense. Uh, these guys with the surfing kites, right? Because they do go up in sine wave patterns, don't they? They go go upwards and then they bring them back down bring them so it could be far away it could be an optical illusion right it could be these guys and maybe there's one that's tied together maybe it looks like two So they're very really straight. A surfing kite would definitely go up and down like that. So we don't know where they're filming. We have no clue where they're filming here. This might be right next to a beach. Surfing kite, I bet you. I bet it's a, it is. I think I'm probably the closest to it. So it could be like one of these that we've seen on the side going up and down. And they've got a pattern that makes it look like two of them. And we're not seeing the curvature. Could be like dark pattern, dark pattern with a white pattern in the middle. Three stripes. It's got two. Uh, have we got a video? One going sine wave pattern. Let's have a look. Videos. Quite for racing. Let's have a look, quick look anyway. Now they've got the skinny kites. Okay, guys, come on, let's go for a second. Uh, okay. So, what are they doing? Okay. So that's what we've sort of seen from the side, but does it go up and down? Have they got it going up and down? Go on, up and down, up and down. No, not going to do it for us. No, he's hydrofallen. Of course, it might not be um, water ones. It could be on land ones next to the power line. Up and down, up and down. And the up and down might be uh, the the mountain side, right? Because the mountain goes up and down, up and down in a sine wave pattern. Uh, I don't think Amy Masson is being terribly honest with us. So, could it be land... Uh, recent kite. Did they say what location it was? Brazil, maybe? Let's see what happens. Kite boarding. 
Uh-huh. Brazil. Uh-huh. Desert. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's going to be the same kites, is it? Skinny kites. Mm, sort of. Um, not quite the same. And these your up and downs. <laughs> the dunes. Yes. There we go. Okay. Uh, it's also water here. Uh, we want more of a side view. So it's not straight up and down like the other ones we were looking at the fall. But I think it's going to be some sort of surfing kite. Uh, let's see, what else can we f search for? There's got to be something. Images. Surfing kite. Surfing box kite. Let's try that. Uh huh. That would make sense if we use it for surfing. I think I'm pretty close to it, but uh, not not solved it. Heard something going on. Uh, JD sent me a message. He doesn't know I'm still online. <laughs> uh, let's see if I can open it up. Okay. Uh, what was I looking for? Box kites. Uh, what's that one there? Quite fallen. Fallen, fallen. So they are like squares, are they? Some of these rectangles. And uh, no, this the board. All ah, right, fallen as in hydro fallen. Now I understand it. Yeah, okay. but the kite species were really skinny looking, not bent around like that. Uh, Anyway, we better finish up on this. Uh, my guess is it's a kite and the person's on the ground. Something like this. Uh, but we just have to find a match for it. And I'll go, go and have dinner. Uh, 8 o'clock. It's a late dinner for me.
Uh, this is only meant to be an hour show, but because of the late start and all that. So it looks to me like it's going downhill. Something like that. And we got uh, telephone poles going upwards. Like that, I think it was. Uh, just make it simple. Well, power line poles, telephone poles. And I think there'd be some kid on a skateboard. Something like that. Uh, don't know if I got a person. Probably used. Um, In the spade before. So we've got a person on a skateboard. Uh, probably some fishing line, which we're not seeing. Some color going up to this kite thing. And uh, Some sort of well, it's not that big, is it? Not that big. Now, why has it not changed? It's like some sort of twin layer cell thing, like um, like a twin biplane wing something like that you know and it's going up and down up and down as it's coming down the hill okay so if that makes sense to you that's what I'm seeing <laughs> that's very really dark Why is it not slick to my colour? That's weird. So this is the hill. I bet you that's what it is. Yeah, so we just um don't save that. <laughs> um yeah, but I should really have a fun now, shouldn't I? Oh I'll figure out something. And of course, I think it might be a double wing, which I haven't typed in before. Double wing kite. It might even be a surf kite. It might be just a kite that someone's pulling along on a skateboard. Double wing, double wing. Getting closer. Double wings. Put the birds up. Yeah. Uh, there's a boxy one here. A Mayan at that as well, which is in the right location. Is that what we're seeing? One of those kites, but longer. And are they using it for surfing? Or rollerblading? I think we're on to it. It's a Mayan kite. <laughs> we'll just call it the Mayan kite. Mayan double wing kite. Well, that one looks like a wing here. 
slingshot kite warden. Uh, let's try um, one more search by wing. Right. Something like that. That's getting closer. Could someone have one of these? <laughs> but just the kite, not the body of it, and just using it as like a surfing kite. There you go, something like that. Uh Oh, you never know what someone built. Hmm. Now, why does that one come with a bow wing? Nothing, nothing about bow on the in, uh, on the front bit. And again, it's got four kites here. Talking about bow wings. So, what have we got here? A box kite. Yeah, it's a surf kite of some kind. Uh, shame I can't pin it 100%, but. Uh, I'm going to give it a 90% chance that it's a surfing kite, roller skateboard or something like that. Uh, what else they got here? We'll just wrap up. Mm. Hi, me. There's all these orbs flying around, a zillion of them. Okay, what's this here? It looks like it's a reflection on a window. This one is just hovering around us. So, he's got a night vision scope, has he? Yeah, I've been filming it for over a minute, I think. For about 45 seconds. It's literally just hovering around us. And that's kind of moving like a bird, isn't it? Uh, or a bat. Well, it's coming back. Is it a bird or bat? <laughs> There's so many. Okay, it looks like a bug coming this way. Of them. Yeah, a lot of like that one. There's a bug below it, but. Yeah. The one that's hovering around. It could be a bat wow. or a bird. And here it looks like oh, another bird or a bat coming in. Oh look how it how it moved. See how it sort of went boom boom as it was flapping the wings. So that's definitely biological. <laughs> Human nature, mother nature, and this up here looks like a star. That looks like st um, Starlink, you know, Elon Musk star formation there from satellites. Wow. Okay. Holy shit. 
I'm okay. So that looks like it could be a lens flare that one and this one here. Watching like a million freaking UFOs over there. Yeah, I can. See. I think they're just insects and the birds. See it through the uh, the scope. Oh my god. Okay, that looks like it might be just a star or planet, that one. These ones here and the line look like uh, the train, as they call it, for the Starlink um, satellites um, for internet. Here, look north. Can you see anything with your eyes? There's like two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, all of them in a line. Yeah, so let's uh, move on. Multiple things being shown here. Uh, nothing there that moved like a UFO, like something like a, something was hovering, shoots up vertically. Any, there was nothing like that. It was like a movement of wings. As if they could be windows on one big craft. No, they're just uh, Starlink satellites, I think. Here we go. Shapes, aren't they? they really are. And that's some evenly sp spread. You don't think it's a window of one big crop? No. If it was, it would have been blocking them out, blocking out the stars. That's true. Yeah. So we just looked at something, and I want you guys to. Uh, take a second look at this due to the fact that some people may think that this is Starlink but after looking at the video closer as you can <laughs> see uh, whatever these craft were they disappeared or they seem to disappear from the view of the night vision what's crazy is you could mm, I didn't know still there at the end <laughs> he just zoomed in see the light and the stars at the same time but when uh, these row of lights disappear they're not going behind any cloud whatsoever you can still see the stars behind so it could be a row of chinese lanterns then couldn't it or a row of led balloons could be anything uh, it's definitely not ufos okay what is this last one to look at means there was there that kind of looks like a bird pause zoom in So I really like the I. Hang on, didn't someone say effing bird at the end there? It's a bird! That's a bird or bat. There you go, look. Um. So it looks like a bird with something in its uh, claws here. Looks like the tail fin. Looks like a tail fin here. Looks like the wing here, wing over the other side. Looks like something caught in, in its claws here. So it's probably some sort of hawk. So I really like if I'm bored. I think they said at the end. <laughs> like the eyewitness and his kind of really amazement of what he's looking at. But after looking at the video even a little closer, you notice as whatever this unidentified object goes over the light uh, post, the light you know seems to blink out. Is there some kind of connection, some kind of electrostatic and well, if it's close to six AM when the when the sun's coming up. Looks like the sun's coming up and these lights get turned off just at the right time. So again, trying to make fantasy out of nothing. Down to disclosure, the secret technology behind the Space Force. Sailing on a ray of light, <laughs> wind. Ah, this is so hilarious. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, well, let's have a laugh. The time is green. Yeah, let's see. Where does it start? 
this is hilarious, man. This is uh, probably too loud, too. Uh, let's have a laugh. A laugh at the end here and wrap up for the night. Uh, turn it down a bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, come on, Brent. The CGI could be better. Was inside the moon. Could it be more rocks and liquid? <laughs> Carving through the stars, a cosmic trip through space and time. <laughs> Dark paranormal. I think you found your cool in life. <laughs> Looking like a dork <laughs> in a suit. Reach the moon in the sky. Uh, anyway, they're probably trying to hit me up with copyright playing their music. It's probably already contact ID'd it, have they? Uh, Lewis, uh, can we mute it? The, the, the bass, uh, the bass drum there is pretty sad, and the guitar music is pretty horrible. Where's the nice synthesizer sounds and all that? And stupid lyrics, traveling through space and time. Looking at the moon, wondering what's inside. Looking at the black hole, wonder if I'll get sucked inside. <laughs> Could make up all sorts of crazy lyrics. Spinning around the sun at 500,000 miles an hour. Actually, it's not actually. Uh, that's a question. We're spinning on the spiral arm at 500,000 miles per hour, but um, the sun. The speed. Circling around the sun. Uh, I suppose we shouldn't give them too many, too many ideas. They might create a new album, album three, with new lyrics. Travelling round 60,000 miles per hour around the sun Which is a trillion to one star <laughs> How many stars in the Milky Way? So what do you reckon? Trillion? Uh, we know there's a lot more out there than we realised uh, let's see, 100 trillion stars, how's that for sounding around about right, let's have a look, 100,000 million stars, so that's not trillion, nor billion, so, but what's 100,000, so that's billion, so it's 100 billion stars, because 100,000, so that's going to be billion, 100 billion stars. Hundred billion stars. The sun is one of one hundred thousand million stars. That sounds better. Uh, let's write some lyrics for the next album. Anyway, <laughs> on that night. It's time to go and get something to eat. <laughs> oh, I got it muted. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Anyway, I got tears in my eyes now. I got to shut down. That's just hilarious. Uh, that's a good thing to finish up on. Uh, that's one thing that Third Face should be packaging themselves as uh, UFA tools, as in tool heads, uh, tool tools, as in <laughs> as in as in tools. <laughs> uh, what's another word for tools? Idiots. <laughs> uh, 
uh, for entertainment because that's basically what that was. Anyway, better wrap up. Stop yapping. And uh, see you again next time, I guess. Uh, this if, it, if I'm not taken out by copyright, because you're not allowed it. They don't honor, don't uh, honor fair use. But anyway, good night all. Where's the sound? There it comes. New Zealand Ampton. See you later, guys. And my synthesize the sound effects. Traveling through space and time. Hailing around the sun at 60,000 miles per hour. Oh, that is so easy. <laughs> yeah, what have we got to say? Bye. Who, who do we have on there? Cover for the last minute there. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for joining us, guys. You're a bit late, though. <laughs> Hope you found it entertaining or learnt something about planes. Anyway, we did cover a fair bit there. You can see I don't always believe Mick West stuff either. And I'm always critical of everything, even TV shows, what they're t trying to tell us. Uh, you'd think they'd have you think perfect, right? So there's no mistakes. But we found otherwise. I hopefully everything worked alright, a few technical problems to begin with again, but uh, I think we got it sorted. I better click tick off this.